Look, everybody knows Hydreigon is an absolute beast, especially on the special side. But it's actually working with a lesser known solid base 105 attack as well, and we can use that to catch people by surprise. Physical Tripod Dragon can set up with Dragon Dance, and then hit for some huge damage with Scale Shot, which becomes 125 power after the 5 hits, along with boosting speed even further. The Loaded Dice Held item guarantees at least 4 hits, and we can also use Stab Crunch along with Earthquake for coverage. Terra Steel works really well defensively along with Levitate, and overall Physical High Dragon is just a fun alternative, especially with almost every one of these bad boys being a special set these days. The Loaded Dice Held item is one of my favorite new items they've introduced in this generation. It makes a ton of Pokemon better, and it definitely makes Physical High Dragon have a nice little niche. And I haven't seen a lot of people messing around with the Physical Tripod Dragon. So today we're going to be showing some love to the boy. And if you're into that kind of thing, consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, and I would love to have you as part of the journey. Now with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. Damn, also, I gotta say, whatever that is you're eating for lunch, let me get a bite of that. Is it, what type of sandwich even is that? Or you can just hit that like button, that'll do the job as well. So, my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Volcarona. I'm going to lead off with the coffee table. And so, this moth is quite scary. There's one thing that is for sure though, and this coffee table is not afraid of a damn thing. So, they actually end up going for the Giga Drain turn 1. That's actually going to knock me down to not even sturdy range. Coffee table's like, that, even, that hardly even scratched me, bro. And also, that actually puts me in a great spot because now, surprise, I actually have a Cuss Tap Berry gonna allow me to move first, and this four times weak to rock fella has to now take a couple of boulders to the face. And no loaded dice necessary, just gonna take two to knock out the Volk. And that thing being gone is actually really good news. The thing has potential to absolutely hoe me, as it has many times in the past, and it's always very satisfying to get a little, little Cuss Tap Berry action. So. With that setup fella gone, they now are able to freely switch into the Azumarill. And I know this little Easter Eggs plan, I am kind of afraid of this thing, because I realize it's probably just going to be Belly Drum. It is just going to go straight for that Belly Drum. Does put it into Citrus Berry range. And here's the bad news about Avalug. A lot of the time, this thing just kind of sits here and allows shit to set up on it. So, as they go for that Belly Drum, now plus 6 attack. It now has access to that Priority Aqua Jet and Huge Power Azumarill. Quite scary. Also, I missed the Rock Blast, because... Every time Avalug does something good, he also then has to disappoint me, which it doesn't really matter that Chip would have been nice, but now they can just finish me off with that Aqua Jet, sadly. However, I am not really that concerned about an Azumarill because I have one little mini weight fella who is actually pretty ready for that. I can go into the Obama Snow, and Obama Snow, this generation, is the favorite child. This thing activates the snow, and immediately with that, it gets a 50% boost to defense. Not only that, but I, of course, you know, resist water from this thing, and a play rough, I feel like I can take one of. And the <laughs> icing on the cake is that I'm actually just 10 points faster than this thing, so I'm able to get up my Aurora Veil, and they're just going to go right for the Ice Spinner. So, I get the boost from the Aurora Veil, boost from the snow, and a bomb of snow is thick as a ball of oatmeal out here, able to live, and then I can just outspeed and then Giga Drain the fella. So, Azumarill goes down, and I steal a little bit of health on the way out. So, now I don't have to worry about being swept by Volcarona, no belly drum, Azumarill shenanigans, and we're feeling pretty good, especially with that Aurora Veil up. So, now with the Revenge Switch, they decide to go into the Golden Go. This thing comes in, talking Cinnamon is the Winamon, and pretty much everything they have is a threat after threat. So, I'm feeling like I probably just sack a Bomb of Snow here, and it actually turns out I can live uh, to make it rain with that Aurora Veil up, which is actually amazing. And then, I can even fire off a nice little Earth Power for some super effective damage which feels pretty good. So I don't really have much that wants to deal with this and I kind of figure a Bomb of Snow doesn't have that big of a role on the team at this point at 20 HP. So I do let it go down, which is now going to open up a nice little opportunity to go into the High Dragon here. So the thing is this Golden Go at this point after using Make It Rain twice can now no longer make it rain his way out of a damn wet paper bag because it's got that minus special attack. And this is a perfect opportunity to try to set up some Dragon Dances. And looking at the rest of their squad, uh, the tripod has a pretty good position here after some setup to do some big old damage. So, they're going to switch that thing out, of course. As expected, they decide to go into the Blood Moon. And that big old scary fella is a pretty massive threat. This thing's bulky, it hits extremely hard, and my Hydra does not really feel like dealing with either a Blood Moon or something like coverage in a Moon Blast. So, after the Dragon Dance, I'm feeling pretty good. The Aurora Veil does wear off, however. So, that's going to make me a lot more vulnerable defensively. 
But luckily, we are prepared for the situation with the Terra Steel. I'm feeling like either they just go for that normal stab. Um, so the Terra Steel kind of covers for both situations here. Obviously deals with my four times weakness to fairy. So I'm going to bust out the axe on my damn head. I feel like it would be a lot better if my little little hand puppet heads also got axes on their head. But Game Freak hates us. So I go for that Terra Steel and I'm just going to set up another Dragon Dance. I know that I'm going to need at least two. And that is because... In the back, they have an Amoongus, and that defensive fella is going to be able to take a scale shot at just plus one. So as I go for that second Dragon Dance, giving the Blood Moon a nice little free show over here, they do hit me with that Moon Blast. And that's where the Terra Steel comes in clutch, because now at plus two, we are not only faster than everything, but now we are an absolute huge threat. So they decided to switch right back into the Golden Go, and this thing does not really have a chance to take an attack here. I do connect on the scale shot. Just gonna lose a couple scales in the process, but that's fine. We have a lot of them to spare anyway, and that is gonna take care of the uh, serial mascot fella. So, at this point, now they can switch into whatever they like. I do, of course, get a defensive drop that comes with the scale shot, but listen, we're not planning on taking attacks anyway. We don't need defense out here, boy. I guess other than Blood Moon. But now they bring in a Moongus, and old Piggy Mushroom is kind of the guy for the job in terms of taking a physical attack here. But, if I can connect on 5 scale shots, I feel like there's a chance that I can just cleanly knock this fella out. I 360 no scope scale shot the hell out of him, and after 4 hits, it's not quite gonna be enough. If we can get one more, we can cleanly knock it out, and we do connect on the 5th. Down goes the Amoongus, and they just straight up turn off their game because the rage is real. <laughs> and they were definitely at a point where the High Dragon just cleans up the rest of the match. And sometimes all it takes is a couple dragon dances on the dragon to make some people very mad. So that's going to do it for game one. Sometimes you got to roll the dice. And when you connect on that five, it is I don't care how defensive you are, after some dragon dances, this thing hits hard. So looking at this next matchup, we have a pretty interesting team over here with some definitely large threats. And I'm also, I got myself a little bit of a different squad. We're working with the Merciless Toxapex. Uh, sat here. If you're interested in seeing that thing in action, I definitely urge you to check that video out. Super fun. And with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so this time after a nice little spin room, my dude's gonna go ahead and lead off with the Fortress. But he's got the wall, he's a nut. He got the wall nut out here and I have a little flower fella. So, the Glamora's role on this team is to be able to set up the Toxic Spikes and just try to help out the Toxapex in the back with my Merciless ability. However, I'm feeling like I'm just gonna go right for the Stealth Rock here. It's kind of... It's kind of a bad matchup on my end just because this thing can potentially rapid spin and I imagine they probably just set up hazards of their own so we just kind of trade stealth rocks. Mine are looking just a little bit bigger for what it's worth and uh, I'm kind of fine with that. So looking at this I, after some thought I'm thinking you know maybe they just go right into a Gudra here. I can potentially mortal spin it, poison it and then have a good time. But they actually just stay in, which makes a whole lot of sense, and then they just gyro ball, which knocks me down below half. But it does at least set up a layer of toxic spikes, which, you know, is pretty nice. And I do kind of want those to stay up for the remainder of the match. So, looking at it here, I don't really have much that I can do to this. I imagine they probably just gyro ball once again. So I just decide to go right into the Toxapex. I'm kind of have, having a bad matchup against the Fortress here. I don't have a whole lot that wants to deal with it, but... We play a little bit of peekaboo with the Hurt and Urchin, and it turns out they actually just rapid spin. So it gets rid of my hard work on my Toxic Spikes and my Stealth Rock. And the Pex has a decent matchup against the Fortress. I imagine their only attacking is going to be through Gyro Ball. So I can take those all day long, and I am going to try to build myself a little bit of momentum here. So I expect them to... I honestly feel like that Gudra is going to come in here. And if it does, I want to try to be able to get, the, uh, get some Toxic Spikes up or even poison some stuff with the Glamora. So I expect the switch. I'm thinking maybe Thick-Ass Gudra comes in this time and then Glimmy has a nice little time. So turns out they actually have the Volt switch, which kind of ruins my prospect of trying to get some momentum. And now they can just have a matchup on anything they want, you know, versus the Glamora. So they decide to go into the Scizor. And Scizor obviously has the option to be Choice Banded. This thing could be a Sword Stance set. It could be it just all sorts of nonsense. So I just decide to go for the Stealth Rock. If they want to touch me, they're going to get those T-Spikes up. And it is just going to go right for that bullet punch to finish me off, but I at least do get that toxic debris. And unless this is a defog scissor, we're going to at least be able to allow those to stay up, barring, you know, Fortress being able to rapid spin, which I do have the spin bot blocker with the Ms. Maggie on this team. So looking at my options, it's time to try to get something going here. This team has a lot of offensive potential. It just kind of depends on who wants to get going. So 
I decide this place is not nearly rocky enough. Pioneers need to drive these babies for miles, and I'm gonna bust out the Rhyperior who is gonna try to get zoom in here. So, main idea with this Rhyperior is, of course, if you have not seen the video, we're working with a weakness policy, knowing that they have the coverage, you know, with that bullet punch. We're physically defensive, it's gonna activate my weakness policy and give me a nice little attack boost. And also, in the same turn, grab myself a little rock polish. And now, we're looking shiny and ready to party out here. So, I have plus two speed, plus two attack. And, uh, honestly, Rhyperior looks pretty nice in this position. They do have a faster mon with the Dragapult, but if it's not a plus speed nature, I'm actually gonna be faster. So, they're just gonna bullet punch once again, do not get the max damage to knock me out. And then Rhyperior can just go right for that Earthquake and take out the scissor. So that thing being gone is fantastic. The priority with that bullet punch is quite scary. And bad news for me, they're gonna go right into Dragapult. So Rhyperior with doubled speed, I'm actually max speed on this thing uh, to try to outspeed as much as possible with a, a nice little plus two. Except Dragapult is way too damn quick and a darts just finishes me off. So I'm kind of down bad at this point and I've made some misplays, but the game is far from over. There's a lot of mons to be played and I do still have some threats over here. So while Dragapult is gonna be poisoned, I'm like, you know what, this might be a decent opening to try to get Pex to come in and like surprise with some merciless crit damage. So I'm thinking I could go into the Hurt Nurchin, but then I realize there's kind of no reason not to go into a Lola Ninetales here. It kind of forces a switch. I can build myself, at least buy myself a little bit of time by coming in, making it snow on the sunny day, and set up a, a little Aurora Veil here to make myself defensive. So that's exactly the plan. They're going to go ahead and U-turn, which uh, we saw that this thing is not carrying either Heavy Duty Boots or a choice item. So it's just going to pivot on out, and they decide to go into the Heatran. Definitely a nice check to the Alolan Ninetales, but I do feel like that Aurora Veil you know, it gives me a bit of value here and just also opens the door to being a whole lot more bulky to try to set something up in the back. So, while Heatran obviously does not get poisoned being steel type, I can pivot into the Toxapex here just thinking that the obvious play is going to be something like a Flash Cannon. I can come in on that Flash Cannon and uh, with my bulky ass Urchin be able to take a hit and then fire off at least a hard hitting water move on the guy. So, I would love to get some chip on this thing. They actually end up going for the Earth Power, which it's going to hit me for super effective, but even after that life orb, it's not going to do a whole lot because this peekaboo peek freaking Stranger Things monster ass fool it, it literally just lives everything, which feels pretty nice. So, at this point in the match, I am pretty down. And you know what you do to try to get yourself a position is make some risky plays here. I am going to end up switching, and that's because I expect that Heatran does not stay in here, seeing that super effective damage isn't going to be able to kill me. I'm going to actually make a nice little double switch into the High Dragon, and... As they go into the fortress, this is exactly the type of matchup we are looking for, and the game is far from over as soon as Hydreigon finds himself a position here. So, we know that this thing can hit us with like a gyro ball, it can try to rapid spin, and this is a great spot to set up here. A lot of the time, these walls are gonna be a good fodder uh, to at least try to get myself going. So, as I go for a Dragon Dance, that's gonna put me in a spot where I am gonna be faster than their Dragapult, which is fantastic. So here's the thing, with one move, we're right back in it. I can take hits all day from this fortress, and I'm like, you know what, I might as well just go for that second Dragon Dance. There's kind of no reason not to, as uh, I know that I can't quite two hit KO that thing with just plus one. So they decide now to just switch into the Gudra, and at this point, we're kind of at a weird stalemate going double Dragon here, because neither of us have used our Terra, and as I'm sitting here at plus two, it feels like a pretty good time against the, uh, the Thicky Dragon here. So. I obviously have the coverage with the scale shot. They have the coverage versus me, you know, with something like a Draco Meteor, and I'm kind of forced to go for that Terra Steel. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. And honestly, barring some nonsense, this uh, the dragon has brought it back for us. After two dragon dances, we're faster than everything. Fortress is the only thing that can live a scale shot, pretty much, and uh, I know that I can live attacks from that. So I go for that Terra Steel. They are also gonna bust out the crystallization. Gonna go for the Terra on their dragon as well. Turns out they're actually gonna go with the Terra Poison just to be able to not have the super effective on the dragon hit, um, but at least it's not gonna be resisted. So I'm feeling pretty good about my odds here. I do connect on the scale shot and it is looking like as long as we the freaking loaded dice works for us, the four hits is gonna be able to take care of Gudra. And that's the benefit of not running special high dragon just because you know, Fizgal deals with a nice little special bulky boy like the Gudra. So, not only do we take that thing out, but we get ourselves another speed boost. This thing is running Mach 10 at this point. And we do not even care about the minus defense because we do not even have to take attacks out here. So, 
I dragons basically like who's gonna be my freaking dinner time out here. It turns out they're gonna go into Heatran because obviously they've seen the scale shot and uh, I likely have the dark coverage, but what they do not know is that it's time for a little bit of a ground pound out here. I have the coverage with the Earthquake. They've used up their Terra, which is perfect, and that takes care of the Heatran. So the Earthquake coverage does come in really clutch against opposing Steel types, and now it's kind of game. I basically have it checkmated here as Scale Shot just knocks out the Dragapult, and that's all I really got to do, and I miss. It scale Shot has absolutely hoed me because <laughs> I, mean, I missed I, the 10% chance has now made this game a whole lot more interesting where they weren't going to be able to knock me out with unless they had like the flamethrower but we saw that this thing was physical and it is of course carrying the thunder wave so thunder wave in this position makes things a whole lot crazier because now my speed is cut in half and I'm like well that scale shot really just kind of ruined it for me however as they don't have anything that can really touch me they are just kind of forced to go for that u-turn and the good thing is scale shot can still at least connect and give me more speed boost and even being paralyzed I'm already at like what like plus three if I can just get a few more I can still outspeed the dragapult and have myself a time so I go for this I do connect this time surprisingly and the fortress is gonna be able to take like two of them this thing is way too damn bulky and way too damn annoying so it does at least put it to range where I'm like, okay, after like a five hitter, it's gonna be close and we know that this thing's only attacking. It's gonna be either Volt Switch or the Jara Ball. And at least I have the benefit of being the Steel type, which is nice. So listen, there is a chance. I don't really wanna go for more scale shots just to lose more defense here. So I decide I'm just gonna go for the Crunch. It's kind of my best damage option here. I can get a defense drop or just straight out kill it depending, but it lives with like 20 HP, which of course it does, which allows it to go for the gyro ball, and luckily I did not drop my defense one more uh, because that allows me to take it. And now it comes down to if this para wants to ruin my day, and it does. I get fully paralyzed, which is extremely unfortunate because if I connected on this next scale shot, I think I would have been faster than the Dragapult, and then I just, it just comes down to more yeah, chances I'm not getting fully parried. So thanks a whole lot, scale shot. <laughs> for missing this is a great showcase of scale shot being great and then also it can absolutely completely hoe you so this you know, sometimes that is in fact the way she goes so the game is not over yet as we've done some damage to their squad and i've still got some mons left i decide to go into the nine tails here i have two options either i go for the blizzard or i set up the aurora veil in hopes that the mons in the back uh, can then take some hits and pull it back for us i opt for the aurora veil option just because I'm like relatively confident that we can we can pull it out here. So they do finish me off with the gyro ball, but having the full health Miss Maggie, the old mustard ghost in the back, could just be exactly what we need here. So I go into mustard, we're behind an Aurora Veil basically for the remainder of the match. And as we take a little bit of stealth rock chip, it is time to see if the ghost can make it happen. So I do have the coverage with the mystical fire, doesn't really matter, uh, but we just go ahead and roast the old walnut over a nice little fire in a mystical fashion and that does take care of it. So, they have two mons left. They obviously have that Dragapult, but me being behind the Aurora Veil, I'm feeling like there's a really solid chance that I can live in attack here because Miss Maggie's not super frail. Plus, this thing's poisoned, a Hex should be able to take care of it, and as they go for the Dragon Darts, it's looking perfect. I can live at least one of them and thanks to that Aurora Veil. So I can then fire off a Hex in return, and down goes the Dragapult with its little feats that pissed me off earlier by missing that scale shot. And now we've got ourselves a little 2v1 situation. I am Life Orb on the Miss Maggie, so I still have some hits left in me. And their final Mon is gonna be the Zapdos. So Zapdos comes in, does not stay, take the Stealth Rock chip, of course, and I'm like, okay, this is gonna be close because I do have a hit left in on this thing. At least we know that the Miss Maggie's faster and then we can see how this is gonna play out. So I decide it's in my best interest to go for the Mystical Fire. That's because I wanna drop this thing special attack while also getting some nice chip here. If I can drop this thing special, it's gonna put me in a way better odds for Toxapex to somehow live a hit. It's at minus one special, we have the Aurora Veil up, and it all is basically going to come down to if Toxapex can not only take a hit, but then fire off a super effective Ice Beam in return and win us the game. So, I bring in the Hurt and Urchin and it is time to see how the game is going to play out. If my calculations were correct, I can live a Discharge because of that Mystical Fire, which does allow us to live. And now Hurt and Urchin fires off the Ice Beam. 
However, it's not quite enough to knock out the Zapdos, which is extremely sad. If I could have just got a little bit more with that mystical fire, that would have been the most clutch thing ever. But freaking pointy ass Zapdos over here comes in and just shits on our parade. So another discharge is going to finish me off. And that is going to be the end of the game. But honestly, a super intense one. Scale Shot is bound to miss. So I'm not that mad at it. But that 10% chance, boy does it really hurt. And still a really fun game regardless. And I, I just love when it, it comes right down to it there. So super fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like on the video. YouTube enjoys it. I enjoy it. And I also read all the comments. So if you want to give some suggestions, uh, just go ahead and let me know. All right. Thanks again, guys. I will catch you next time. Peace out.